this is one of those uh, one of those water furnaces. Uh, it's got one of them teeny tiny leaks in it that we can't find. It's got a IntelliZone system on it. Right there on the side. It says it won't get above 62 degrees in the house. We're running in heat. Let's check some things out. data on this thing or not, probably not, but pushing about 81 degree air out of it. So we have a water furnace Premier 2. <laughs> So we know we're moving water, about 7 PSI.
Give that a minute to run. two ounces in it so far. We're starting to look a little bit better on our gauges. I need to get a little bit more refrigerant in it. We're going to take it out of cooling and put it in heat. Take our jumper wire off. We're running in heat now. We got one pound six ounces in it now. Not too bad. Remember this is our 22 unit. And we're putting 427A in there, which is a blend of four different refrigerants as far as I know. So I'm looking at the green temperatures here. And the green temperatures here. Sorry, about a 105 degree evaporator and a 40, de 40 degree coax coil. Let's see what our uh, leaving air pressure, air temperature has gone up to at 91. Remember, we pulled up, and set up to, and it was only 90 something. Find my. Six point eight. I usually got a gaseous water furnace up every year and a half or two years or so. It's such a small leak, we just can't find it. It's probably leaking in the coil. The coil is about four inches thick. But uh, it's starting to work out. We got two pounders in it or so. She ought to do all right. <clears throat> all right, we got two pounders in her now. About a hundred and two hundred and almost a 225 head pressure. Sixty-five degree suction pressure. Two pounds of refrigerant. So yeah, we're dialing it right in. Leaving air temperatures now ninety-seven. Let's see if we can get our uh, entering air into the unit. Let's see how that's looking. I'm sure this bad boy is going to satisfy in a few minutes. We got a 73 degree entering air temperature. Two twenty five head. We're probably not gonna change the suction too much because it's trying to maintain whatever superheat. Probably 12, 14 degree superheat on this unit. Just a typical gas and go. Do this, like I said, every year or two. It looks like the label plate's so faded, I can't even tell you what size the unit is. I'm 
No more ice capades over there on the expansion valve. Looks good. The thing is, we're moving quite a bit of water. Probably about 12, 13 GPM. she shut down is because she dropped down in the first stage. As you can tell on the zone board here, you got thermostat input one, thermostat input two, thermostat input three. This is your output to the unit. And these go to your different dampers. These are the relays for your dampers. These are the fuses for your dampers. So you can see this does ask for Y2, Y1. This one's only asking for Y1. This one is satisfied. It's actually got the O-wire energized for the reverse valve for cooling. This is probably above the garage in the bonus room. And uh, so my output has dropped the Y2 signal. And on this specific, specific unit, actually, it has two sets of contactors two sets of contacts in the compressor. The compressor runs one way for first stage, shuts down, and then runs the other way for second stage. This is a very, very old unit. A little temperamental baby is what it is. But so she's going to try and satisfy now on the first stage to finish satisfying these two thermostats. But since both of them are not calling for Y2, it drops down into first stage for better efficiency. And that's fine. That's what she's supposed to do. You see these are your fan speed dip switches. And these are your control dip switches. The top one is test and normal, which you don't want to put it in normal speed or test mode in, with three wire dampers because what will happen is it energizes your dampers for a certain amount of time, about 160 seconds or so, two, and a, two minutes or so to open it, or two minutes to close it. If you speed up your timer, what's going to happen is it's going to speed the timer up by 16 times, and your damper is either not going to open all the way or not going to close all the way, because it's only going to send that signal and just move it a little bit, then stop. So you must leave it in normal speed with three wire dampers. Central zone, multi-zone, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you have it in central zone, everything works off of the zone one thermostat. If you have it in multi-zone, or central, yeah, multi-zone, it'll work the dampers off of each one of the different thermostats. You can set it up for a single speed unit or a two speed unit. You can upstage it faster or slower, depending on the re response you're looking for. And then at the bottom, you can tell it whether you're using two wire dampers or three wire dampers. It's all very simple stuff. I'm hoping you guys are getting this because I know it's kind of shady. I'm going to do the best I can with the lighting here. I hope the GoPro is picking up my voice fine. So, yeah, it's very. It looks very a little more complicated, but it's a very simple setup. This is the most simple zone board I've ever worked on. Just because you have so much control over everything with the dip switches. Of course, this goes to your fan speeds if you are using the fan speed output, which is right here. I'll show that to you. That is right here on the board. It's the volume set. So this harness actually goes to the ECM motor and control, the, so the zone board controls the speed of the fan with these, using these lights to indicate which speed it's actually working at. <clears throat> and that's just a little quick overview of the uh, zone board and how that works. A uh, good way to know whether you're having to use a 24 volt thermostat or a common side thermostat which they did back in the day as you can look up here in this little pin 
it says AT or 24 volts. If it's an AT unit, it works off a of common rather than red. So you want a jumper. If you wanted a jumper, it you wanted a jumper common to yellow or common to O or common to G in order to get anything to happen. And that's what happens with these units. These specific thermostats actually don't use the red wire to finish a circuit. They use the common wire. The red wire turns into the common then, basically. And that's just a quick overview of that. If you want to pause it, take a look. That's all good. But yeah, this is old school stuff here. So yeah, we are running out. We're running on our first stage. We got 88 degree here. I'm leaving the unit. It's about 73 in the house. I'm probably not going to put too much more gas in there than that. That's creeping up to three pounds. We got two pounds, 11 ounces. And it all looks good so far. Alright, I'm going to button this thing up and we'll get out of here. We're going to do a start up.